Okay, so I hear a lot of folks talking about how the oil baths and the hubs fail. Um, I've had mine for quite a while and uh, I do some maintenance occasionally. Um, so I'll, I'll do a couple of little quick clips. Uh, I hear a lot about them failing, but I never hear a lot about why they fail. Uh, I'm not quite sure then why, uh, why the, you know, what's, what to look for for how to prevent the fails. But I know what I do and I'm, I'll just share you at least how the comp share with you how the components are put together and what I do to keep them clean and, and freshen them up if they get a little cloudy indi can get indicating some water intrusion and that sort of thing. So uh, this is, these are the major components in the hub and the, the oil bath, uh, I guess, uh, I forget what they call this tip. But um, anyway, so this is the main casing. This is a 2.3 inch size, I think it is, on the outer diameter here. And this is a spring that goes inside. Uh, this is the little uh, casing, or the, the glass, or it's actually plastic, tip that goes on the inside through which you're able to see the, uh, the oil level. And also, uh, these are supposed to move in and out with uh, any pressure changes inside of the cavity. And so, um, they, it's recommended, and I always try to get every bit of air out to prevent or to minimize the amount of movement that has to take place with the expansion contraction of the fluid. Now, air is going to be much more... Uh, dramatic in terms of expansion contraction so that's why they don't want any air inside of this oil bath to, it minimizes the amount of movement therefore the reduces the chance you're gonna have a leak so you try to get all of the air out to limit the amount of expansion contraction that this has to slide in and out to, uh, to compensate for so I'll, uh, I'll show you um, putting this together I got to put another oil o-ring on here I don't know if I can do it with one hand but I'll try so this goes on here that's got two oil rings at least on this version I have and I bought some new ones and I think they're exactly the same way. So these are not new O-rings. I don't even know where to get them exactly. Um, so I just, I'm just using what I have. They're all nice. They're still nice and supple and they're, uh, they're uh, bulged out well above the edge. So they're, they're gonna do fine in terms of sealing still. At least I believe so. Uh, and I'll monitor to make sure. And so this goes in um, as such. And these, these O-rings seal on the inside of this cavity. So what I found is very often this cavity in here gets really gritty and that happens from just road grime as it comes in from the outside around the casing. And so that can itself create a leak all, all on its own without anything to do with the inner seal or anything else. Of course now that's in, indicative of, uh, you know, one of the things that can happen with the oil bath that wouldn't happen with grease. I get that. But I think that's one of the reasons we find uh, fails in this particular system. But again, I don't, I don't really hear many people talk about how it fails. That just seems like a common way it would fail. And then this is just a simple little O-ring here. I don't think it does much, but I'll put a little uh, sealant around the outside of that too, like a gasket maker to try to enhance that. I tried to find some of these. I, I don't even know where to get these. You know, it's off a 2004 trailer. Anyway, I'm gonna put this back together and then I'll, uh, oh well, I, I guess I'll show you the last part. So this goes on here just before you tap this back in. This goes in here, and then this ring goes in here inside of it to hold it in place. And so I'll show you that in just a moment how it works once it's back. All right, so I guess part two. Um, I'm gonna, I've reassembled this component set for the outer part of the hub for the oil bath. And you can see the clip, how it fits in there. It's nothing complicated. And that holds the spring in place. And this is, this is how it actually works. As it gets pressure inside of it, it pushes out. Um, I can't do it with my thumb hardly. Um, I've got one hand here, but the idea is uh, that as pressure as pressure builds inside of this cavity, it pushes out. Let me see if I can push it out, and then I'll I'll, uh, I'll try to show you that. Um, so here I, I kind of pushed it out with my thumb. So it's meant to work in and out like this right here. I can't do it very easily on the video, but as pressure builds inside of the cavity, it'll uh, it'll push out. And these O-rings around the outside, inside of that cavity, seal the oil inside. And so that's why the grit, I think, can be a cause of failure, because it gets between those O-rings and then the oil leaks out, and of course then there's no lubricant. And then the, the more it leaks out, the worse it gets because of the air and the expansion and so on. So I, uh, anyway, when you see that part, I'll we'll come back in a moment with uh, the rest All of right, this. The hub itself, before I put this back in, I want to show you what's in here. So there's a little ring in here. You'll see there's a, uh, a groove cut inside of the hub right in there or maybe you can I don't know I hope you can right there and I just took out this little o-ring right here that sits on the inside of it and it seals on the outside of that ring once you put this in I'm sorry 
that sits on the outside of this ring and seals it as you put it in. So it's really a, this is the primary seal for this cup. And then I've got an extra seal on this one. I don't even think the new ones don't seem to even have that extra seal on it, but this is the primary seal. I, I put a little extra seal on around the outside just for extra measure. This would be the replacement for that particular seal for this one for the Ranger I've got. It's a 2.3 inch, 2.328 oil case uh, O-ring. Again, it goes on the inside. So I'm gonna put it back in and then I'll show you with it installed. Okay, whatever. so now I have the O-ring in. If you can see right there, it's in. It's a little tricky because it's bigger than this size here and so it tries to loop in, but that's good because once it's in there, it'll hold its place. Once you try to drive this piece in, it will uh, it'll stay in place. Now I'm gonna lubricate this so that it has a chance to slide past that o-ring and not try to grab it and push it on back. I'm gonna try to show the install. I don't know if it's uh, showing up right or not. I hope it is, um, but I'm just gonna give it a go. It doesn't work, sorry. Um, so here goes. I'm just gonna lubricate the uh, tip and I always use this kind of oil. This is exactly what Ranger Okay, so, um, ago, so I'm I actually, uh, I, I mentioned 50, in my original uh, video that there's, there's no, no additive in this oil. There is additive. The there's some really good additives can, uh, in this oil. It's just that there's no viscosity improver added. That's why it's a straight 50 have, uh, weight, but it's still a very good lubricant, uh, uh, still, and it is recommended by Ranger. It's still performing pretty darn well as an oil. It's just indicative of a leak, um, so something you probably want to take care of. All right, so I'm going to lubricate this edge here. Before I try to put this on, I'm just going to uh, make sure that's nice and slick. Um, I think we're good here, but I'll, uh, I'll make sure. My hands wiped them down a little, but uh, hopefully I'm good enough. And then I got a rubber mallet. I'm going to use that to tap this in place. Um, I have a new one of these, but I don't think I really need it. So I'm just going to take it and go slowly while it's going. Till it seats. Okay, now I'm seated. There it is. Now, all I'm going to do now is start filling this with oil. And, and I've got a couple extra quarts of this. It's kind of expensive, but um, at the last bit, when I put the last bit on in, sometimes I use a syringe to do this. But anyway, here's what I do um, just to hurry it up. It's still a little bit hard. Um, kind of messy, but I don't care. It's just a little oil. Doesn't require much anyway. Okay, so it, uh, gotta go slowly a bit here. Again, you can't push in on this, but this thing comes out naturally with pressure on it. And I'm just gonna, if I slow down a little, I think it'll go a lot faster in terms of the, the filling process. You get in a hurry, it uh, sort of jams up the hole, fills it full of oil and backs out. I'm just gonna see if I can try the slower method and keep it you know, going in there. It's kind of filling up okay now it's full here but it's uh, it's gonna work its way out here now air is bubbling out there I don't know if you can see that I hope you can if you're not um, you got me talking about it nothing more so all I'm doing is just put it in there and you can see here it's starting to fill in that hole I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video and then I'll come back to it once I got got it mostly full all right so I'm in a place now where the cap is on I have filled it completely full you can see there's I can't see any air whatsoever in there, none at all. And you can see inside of there, it's a nice clean looking environment. Um, I'm gonna now put the plug in with this full completely. Um, now I used a little bit of uh, Teflon tape around the threads. Uh, they say to use sealant, but I don't think sealant's gonna do any good because it won't stick unless I dry it, um, like uh, with acetone or something. So I'm just gonna use uh, Teflon tape like is commonly used in the industry. I've used this stuff in the chemical industry and it works wonderfully. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use Teflon tape around the seal and then I'll uh, snug it up a little bit. So, all right, so I think I'm all done. I, when I spin this, I think you can see there's just a tiny amount of air you can see. It kind of sits up in the top of this and I don't, I don't know how to get that part out, but you might be able to see there's like a little bubble in there. The very top, I don't know. If you can't, I don't know. But anyway, it kind of hovers around the top. I think that's about as empty as you can get it. Um, I don't know, I'll just monitor it afterward, make sure everything's okay. Um, I tried the Teflon tape on that. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. I may put a dab of sealant on as well. I snugged it up, not real tight, cause I don't want it to you know, strip or get, be hard to get off if I do it again. But uh, I think that's it. 
Um, if I think of something else, I'll add. Just remembered one more thing. Um, I found that uh, for the last little bit and going slowly to not make a big mess, I use a syringe and a little bit of tubing um, to get uh, get it to top off in that hole without it just being a mess of pouring it in there. Uh, especially if you're just trying to be a little more conservative and not lose so much of your oil. Uh, you can do it the other way. This is just uh, for topping it off. Well, I'm doing the second of these on this side. I already did the other two a couple days ago. Um, you can see the difference between a sort of a milky looking oil and a clean oil there. Uh, it's still very, uh, very good at sort of lubricating. It's just you don't want to go too long like that because um, it uh, can add some corrosivity to it, especially if you've got salt water intrusion, that sort of thing. So that's what the second one looks like. Um, but the repair is, or the uh, the maintenance is pretty much the same as on the, uh, the prior part of the video. Thought you well, might like cool to see. hubs uh, for the Ranger trailers that have the oil in them. What you can see is this is kind of stuff that can be inside a cavity. That's a sealing surface, and this is this is what it seals that out. It's got a double O-ring, so you can imagine if that gets caked up in there or some gunk gets in there, maybe grit or whatever. You could imagine it could compromise the the integrity of the sealing of those o, through those O-rings, and then the oil could uh, uh, presumably leak out. So I thought you'd like to see that.